Hello and thank you for tuning into this video. I'm John Milkey. I am a physician that works part-time for Presbyterian Homes and they've asked me to share my thoughts about the virus so I'm appreciating the fact that you've um, tuned into this link. I want to provide you with good information about the vaccine so that you can make an informed decision as a frontline healthcare worker or an employee of Presbyterian Homes. I am an internal medicine doctor and I specialize in geriatrics. I started working for Presbyterian Homes about eight years ago and helped start the hospice and house calls. I um, currently am the medical director of many of the care centers at Presbyterian Homes and am working uh, full-time with Genevieve providing patient care at a number of um, Presbyterian homes, including Carondelet, Folkestone, Lake Minnetonka Shores, and Castle Ridge, along with a few um, assisted livings. So I've been part of Genevieve through this whole COVID epidemic, and we have spent hours and hours as a group um, communicating with each other about how to treat people with COVID, how to help our facilities do a better job managing COVID. And now that the vaccine's available, we want to share information about uh, why we think that getting the vaccine is a good idea. So I do want to encourage you to get the vaccine, and here's why. First of all, I received the vaccine in my left arm uh, about a month ago. I'm due for my second dose in a couple of days. Um, why did I get the vaccine? Well, I think there's three main reasons I got the vaccine. First of all, I'm in an age group where I could get serious disease, and that really frightens me. So I got the vaccine for very personal reasons, so I would not get sick. Secondly, I want to protect my family and patients from getting the COVID virus and the risk of me Getting COVID and passing it on to somebody else goes way down once I get the vaccine. So I'm a safer person to be around. And thirdly, I'm a member of society. And by everybody getting the vaccine as quickly as possible, we hope that the levels of the infection go down to essentially zero. And many of our elderly people that we're taking care of and others that we know uh will not get sick from this virus. So three reasons, severe disease, uh, not spreading it to families and, and my patients, and uh, third, to be a good member of society. So let's talk about the vaccines. Pfizer and Moderna have made these mRNA vaccines. It's important to know that these, um, this technology has been studied for over 30 years. Um, and in the last 10 years, they've been working on vaccines. Uh, you may have heard of the SARS virus or the MERS virus that were similar to COVID, but not as uh, worldwide in their distribution. And they started working on these vaccines for those viruses. And um, those viruses went away. They were controlled uh, by other means, so the, the vaccine work really got put on hold. Um, why, why did the vaccines get developed so fast, and is that something that we should be frightened about? Well, the technology of sequencing mRNA and DNA um, has been around for a long time, and it's it was ready to sequence this mRNA from the virus. The need was tremendous to get a vaccine ready and ready for distribution. And then finally, uh, governments uh, put tremendous amounts of money into this, which allowed researchers to essentially drop everything else they were doing and work on getting this vaccine done. Uh, in addition, once they went to do studies, you need enough people to get the um, infection so that you can tell whether the vaccine works or not. So uh, both Pfizer and Moderna recruited 30,000 people quickly. 
vaccinated 15,000 each. So a total of 30,000 people have been vaccinated. And they were able to follow those people for three months to see is the, vi is the vaccine safe and is it effective? And as you know, it's 94 to 95% effective at reducing symptomatic disease. In addition, these vaccines completely eliminated severe disease. So if you were one of the 30,000 people that got the vaccine and by chance you contracted COVID, which was an unusual circumstance, only 5% of people would, even when you got the vaccine, even when you got the virus and the disease, you did not get severe illness. So you didn't end up in the ICU, you didn't end up on a ventilator, uh, you didn't end up with uh, these serious complications. So is the speed that the vaccine was produced, is that a negative or not? And I view it more as a miracle of modern science that we were able to take all of the technology, all of the background research that was done, apply enough money, and then researchers collaborated together to develop this vaccine. How do they work? Very simply, we have in our cells DNA, and this has nothing to do with DNA, but when our cells want to make a protein, the DNA unravels and mRNA is made off of our DNA, and then the DNA closes up again. The mRNA travels to a little uh, molecule called the ribosome, which reads the mRNA, kind of like a, a zipper going through the, the zipping mechanism. And on the other side of this ribosome, protein comes out, which codes for a certain kind of protein in our a bloodstream, let's say hemoglobin or something. So what the mRNA virus does, the COVID virus, is it infects the cell, it inserts its own mRNA into the cell, and the cell then makes more of the virus and the virus goes out into the bloodstream, which then spreads through our body. What the scientists have done is taken only a very small part of that mRNA, which codes for the spike protein. We've all seen the little round balls with the red spikes on the outside. So using um, sequencing technology, we know exactly the code for the spike protein and if you put that mRNA into a cell, the ribosomes will read that, will make a protein, and secrete that protein, the spike protein, out into the bloodstream. That is not the entire virus, it's only the outside of the virus. And these researchers guessed, and they guessed properly, correctly, that if we presented the body with that spike protein, that antibodies would develop against the spike protein and cells would come and gobble it up and learn um, how to be immune to the COVID virus. The last problem to solve for the researchers was how to get that mRNA, that short sequence, which is not the virus, you cannot get infected with the virus from this short sequence, how to package it to get it into our cells in a vaccine in a shot. And they developed a tiny lipid envelope um, that surrounds the mRNA so that when we are getting vaccinated, we're getting tiny little globules of lipid injected into our muscle cells with some of that mRNA that goes to work and makes spike proteins so that inside of our body, we have spike proteins and our immune system reacts to those spike proteins. And if we have had the virus in the past, we have some antibodies. When we get the shot again, which we're supposed to, even if we've had it or not, we get a more robust response 
and then the second uh, shot from the vaccine uh, gives us a more long-lasting immunity. It's a booster, and it it improves our immunity. Uh, we don't know how long that immunity lasts, but the information I've received is at least a year at this point in time. So the vaccines work by using our own body to take mRNA, make a small protein that the immune cells respond to, and then are ready to kill the COVID virus if it comes into our system. It's a brilliant way of doing things, and it works 95% of the time, which has shocked uh, almost everybody um, who has, has done virus work. So it works, it's safe, no serious side effects. The side effects, we, what we call side effects, are actually an effective immune response. So if you're worried about side effects, think about when your sore, arm is sore, you get achy muscles for a day or two, you might have a low-grade fever, um, you might feel out of sorts, fatigued for a couple of days, maybe up to three days. We are calling those immune response. So you're getting an, an effective immune response, not side effects. Um, what are some of the concerns that people have voiced? And I'd like to go through these fairly quickly. Um, mRNA, does it alter our cellular DNA? mRNA comes out of DNA every day in our cells throughout our whole body, but it never goes backwards. So mRNA cannot go backwards into our, um, into our cells. It does not alter our genetics. Is Bill Gates implanting little chips in our um, muscles? No, he's not. That's been thoroughly studied, and, and that's uh, a myth that's created by people that want to worry you unnecessarily. Um, has it been studied enough? Well, the initial studies had um, 30,000 people that actually got either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. They were watched very carefully for three months. And, um, and now those people have been followed for another uh, three months. Plus, we've had millions of people be vaccinated already. Um, and we have seen no severe side effects. There is the occasional allergic reaction, which we can treat. And of course, when you're giving vaccines to millions of people, sometimes in the next two or three or four days, somebody will die of some other reason, but statistically it's not from the vaccine. So if you've been waiting to get the vaccine, you've watched your coworkers get the first dose, um, now is the time to go ask them, say, how was it? How did you feel? And as the second dose is becoming available, I would recommend if you answer that question and, and your coworkers say, it worked fine, I didn't have any severe side effects, I got a good immune response, then please get in line and get, get the vaccine. The second dose, the second shot um, will get you in line for then the your second dose on the third uh, vaccine clinic. Uh, every place is having three, as you know. Um, some people say it's not 100% effective, so why bother getting it if I'm going to get the disease anyway? Well, it's 95% effective, and if you can get a vaccine and avoid the severe consequences, which we know happens to anybody from age 16 or 17, all the way up to 95, anytime you get this virus, it's a roll of the dice that you could end up in the ICU on a ventilator with severe disease. So get the vaccine. It's a lot easier than getting very sick from COVID. Uh, if you've already had it, the recommendation is to get in line and get the vaccine so that your immune system gets um, reminded about the virus and, um, and you're even more um, able to fight it off the next time. Um, 
some people say the side effects are pretty bad. I'd say one to three days of a sore arm, possible low-grade fever, feeling achy, feeling a little bit lethargic or sleepy, means that your immune system is working hard to recognize the spike protein, and, and that's a good thing. So I don't look at these so much as side effects as your immune system working well. We have heard um, some people be concerned about fertility. Um, there's a study being done now about male fertility. There's no evidence that it causes any change in male fertility. Um, I went online and researched the American uh, College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which is the group of uh, OBGYN doctors, and um, they recommend that pregnant women and lactating women, especially frontline healthcare workers, consider getting the vaccine, that they be offered the vaccine, and they receive the vaccine, and no physician approval is necessary. They say that because uh, if you're pregnant or expect to be pregnant, um, getting COVID can cause more severe disease in pregnancy compared to other people your age. So it's better to get the vaccine, which has no known effect on pregnancy. There's no really conceivable way it would affect a pregnancy because it stays up here in your arm. And the group of doctors taking care of pregnant women are recommending that it be done. All of that said, call your doctor and say, I'm pregnant, should I get the vaccine? And that will help you uh, settle the, the issue. And, and I think your doctor would be happy to answer those questions if you have them. Uh, finally, some people say, I still have to use PPE, I still have to wear a mask. And I think that's um, still appropriate. It's not 100% effective, so there's a one in 20 chance you could still get the virus from somebody out in the community and spread it to one of our um, uh, elderly people in, in our facilities. So yes, we still will use PPE. I expect as more and more people get the vaccine, eventually um, restaurants will open up, we can go back to watching ball games, and um, PPE for people who have been vaccinated may be changed. That's not the case yet, but um, once you're vaccinated, you're going to be in that group where um, when things do change, it will change especially for you. Um, finally, you cannot get COVID from the vaccine. It does, doesn't have any of the viral particles in it, um, and it, uh, it's simply impossible for, um, from this vaccine to get COVID disease. Um, all that's ha happening is your body is making small bits of the outside of the virus, the spike protein, which are then um, stimulating our immune system to become resistant to it. So in conclusion, I would say, follow my lead. I got the vaccine. I'm doing fine. I'm gonna get another one in two days. Um, do it for your residents. Do it for your families and coworkers so that you don't get sick and spread it to them. And do it as a member of society so that as enough people get vaccinated, uh, the lockdowns and the um, massive changes to society can go away. So for many, many reasons, I recommend getting the vaccine. I hope this has been helpful to you, and uh, I'll see you in line to get your shot. Bye.